Welcome to the Kinship Birth Connections podcast. I'm Lauren Archer, and today it is my privilege to introduce you to Sharon Joy Kleitsch. Sharon Joy is one of the original members of Kins Tampa Bay, a thriving and evolving group of kindred spirits that is guided by the sciences of consciousness, living systems, fields, and networks. As a principal of Connection Partners, Inc., Sharon Joy has synthesized her executive experiences at Citigroup with a master's in spirituality, inspiring individuals and grassroots organizations to listen together in conversations that matter, leading to actions that make a difference. She is a meta-networker who weaves together local initiatives in the Tampa Bay, Florida bioregion with global initiatives. Sharon Joy is recognized internationally as a leader in organizing and facilitating small and large group processes. Well, one of the reasons I wanted to reach out to you specifically is that you have been involved in Kins Networks for many, many years, and you have taken some of the Kins principles and the models, and you have adapted it to what you're doing on the ground in the St. Petersburg, Tampa Bay area. And uh, I'd love to share with our listeners some of the actual on the ground ways you're using these models and these principles. And I know that is a big question and there is so much that you do, but maybe just start with catching us up with what's happening in St. Petersburg. Well, that is a more complex story which I will address. What I notice as you're saying this about longtime kins, I think it's really significant to point out to me the the bones of kins that, that I have had confirmed over the years that uh, continue to make sense and, and bring about results. And I remember first hearing Susan talking about someone approaching her about bringing together a group of people around to dress solar by 2030. Okay. And that I think she said it took her a year or so to find all these people. Yes. I'd be curious how many other people were that thoughtful and knew the power of the choices she made to convene that group of people. There were about 40 people, I think, right? I believe so. But yes, let's let's go into that because it's yeah. not just, oh, let's randomly grab some people and bring them together in a room. So absolutely you not. About that? Yeah. Because to me, that's something that has been key. Uh, I wasn't conscious of it. It seemed to be a natural proclivity. I think many of the things Susan has done is the same thing which is why I want to slow down and see if I can't identify some of these bones of Ken's that I- I, That you're using the word bones, right? So it's like, what's what's the core? What's the foundation, the infrastructure that holds it together that makes this system work so well? And I believe that thoughtful uh, recognition of, of, of seeking and then choosing I can't imagine what that process was. Took her a year, she said. Yeah, yeah. And that so, was for the internet, of course, right? So uh, I would imagine lots of digging, searching, researching. Yeah. So really, let's recognize that was significant. Yes, we don't just uh, think about calling a few folks. Right. It's not getting as many people as you can in the room. That's the qualitative. Yes, good point. The quantitative is to me a core element, which is why I want to focus on it. Okay. And when she was here, she used the Barbara Marks Hubbard wheel. Okay. We, uh, yes. uh, con- conscious evolution. We have been using with the connection partners, the permaculture flower. And as I pointed out to her, one of the things we like to help ourselves do is learn words that support life and uh, choose examples of nature rather than um, language that we've fallen into that continue to, to reinforce words and concepts of war and machines. 
I'll give you an example that we use so often is bullet points. Mm, beautiful. Yes. And that is something that most of us are completely unconscious to. I wouldn't have even picked that out. Bullet points. Well, right. Think about the energy that goes off into the universe with these words. They always have. Yeah. That's one of the things that caused me to say, Susan, if you're okay with this, I prefer we use the permaculture flower. So that's one of the changes we've made with our Ken's Tampa Bay and convening people in 2011. So I'm starting now to answer a little bit about what you ask here. So I have, oh, maybe 20 or 30 people that I invited very thoughtfully in each one of the petals. That was back in 2011, Susan okay. Kane, okay. and we did some of it together, but I had to think of who did I know, say, in arts and education are built, uh, built out tools, uh, the different choices, and knowing that for various reasons, not everybody could come. So invited a lot, a lot of people. I don't know what Susan's process was with the Ken's solar network. It could have been somewhat the same. And then trusted that the right people would show up. We had two convening times where Susan met in an organic garden, Sweetwater Farm over in Tampa, right on a little tributary that washed into the uh, Tampa Bay. And then over in Pinellas County, where I live, we had one the next day with people who live more in Pinellas or couldn't make the Saturday, so came on the Sunday. And it was out on the, uh, the Boca Ciega Bay, where actually the Spaniards had landed in 1528 to begin colonizing North America. And this space is quite a sacred space where the Tocobagan village was. And that's where we had another Ken's gathering. Again, people invited, people came to listen, and then people chose whether they wanted to come to the convening session, which was, I guess, the next weekend. And uh, if you remember, I told this story before, I asked each person to bring some soil from where they live, as Susan had modeled back at a Noetic Sciences Conference from people coming from all over the world. And we put it in a, in a big bowl, as she had done at the conference. And brought the soils together from each of the individuals. And then each of us took back with us the mix of all of this earth that represented Tampa Bay. So that was, again, a chance for people to decide, do they want to stay in this Kins Tampa Bay group? So that's a brief expansion on what you ask about what's going on here in Tampa Bay and then how we select it. So using Susan's model of thoughtful selection. Uh, and I also believe her criteria of setting up these conversations is really key. And if I remember correctly, there's a seat that you can't see being filled because it's a space for spirit to show up. Love it. In it's, these circles. Like a literal, um, like physically making a demonstration putting a seat there for the kin's principle that we sit at the table of unknowing and invite the universe, God, spirit, whatever yes. to co-create yes. with us. I love that. Yes. Well, and, and both of those, the, the dirt model is a tangible uh, representation so that it takes something so abstract and gives people a way to wrap their, wrap their limited human brains around it. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. So I felt that uh, what Susan brought in a structure, again, the bones, mm -hmm. The selection process, the gathering process, the uh, chance to meet again, the co communication was very thoughtfully uh, presented. And uh, we convened, um, I guess there were about 35 of us in a lovely open space. I think that's another quality of convening that most people don't recognize. If you can be in nature, if you can be if not outside, that you have lots of open windows and maybe even open doors. So life can flow through mm -hmm. and spirit is welcome. So those are qualities of before you even begin that I think are some of the, the important bones. Um, and I, as I've said to you, I believe 
the book that she wrote on the Trojan horse of love. That's another one of the additions I would add when you were describing some of the things that the Connection Partners has been doing. We have blatantly added demonstrating how love can transform communities. And that in fact was our intention in 2021. And oh my gosh, trying to summarize manifestations of perhaps that very powerful intention is such a, uh, a journey in gratitude. And so 2022 will include documenting it. Oh. And so that's where Susan's book about the Trojan horse of love, I think is extremely powerful. One of our newer partners is Stephen Post, who started the Institute for Research on Unlimited Love at the urging of Sir, Don, Sir John Templeton and the funding. And uh, this is where we have many partners uh, to demonstrate and to research by indicators, what we choose as the indicators, how love is transforming St. Petersburg in 2022. So I think that's one of the things that Connection Partners does and is doing more is we have a research team of qualitative and quantitative researchers respected in their fields. Not only do we have that, they are collaborating and learning together the benefits and the, the, it's the yin and the yang of love. That you're, yeah, and I love that you're actually using the word love, demonstrating the power of love. Uh, I heard it said once, it's like, yes, love is in our lexicon. We do use that as part of our vocabulary. And uh, yes. so to be overt with that, and I know how, yes. how important language is to you. And that's yes. awesome. So and how are you measuring that? Well, go ahead. I want to Well, you... that's next year. Okay. The, nec the next year is setting up the, the, uh, the indicators. Okay. But we have had a practice, a couple of practices here this year in, um, and I don't want to take us too far off track with Ken's because the point being, I think Susan's book, I said the bones yep. and, and, and the, uh, the selection process, the gathering process, the way people communicate um, and the book, The Trojan Horse of Love, I think is the key piece. The other that I think is yet to materialize or maybe mature is the word network. Tell me more. People use the word network like they use the word systems. And until we have a common agreement about what those words mean, we don't have the force of what they can mean, the implications for global mind change. And that comes in through some of our other partners. And you've heard about us talking about Fritjof Capra mm -hmm. and his course in a systems view of life. And we've done this with three experiments already. And people who are out as activists in our communities now have a deeper understanding of the initial radiation that came from the various bangs as we created our metaverse and um, how we apply those skills that we each bring being stardust into our networks can be quite remarkable. Networks is not a throwaway word and systems is not a throwaway word. Just like you mentioned consciousness, networks, fields, so forth. Each one of these, if you have a common agreement about what the words mean and the value to any group, and that is part of the connection partners, then you are much more laser focused. And the clarity of your intention, you will find just pulls you off into just the most exciting opportunities that you never imagined. Therefore, you couldn't have dreamed them up and strategically planned them. I love it. So it's that, um, it's the convening, it's the aligning, it's the clarity, making sure mm -hmm. that people are in agreement about exactly. what the words mean. That all yeah. is, is time up front, it sounds like, really making sure you're being specific. And sometimes people will moan and groan because there's no action. 
Mm. Good point. Yes. But Especially little d- driven people. <laughs> well, do you, do you fault the soil that doesn't show the plant shortly after you put the seed in it? Right, right. The seed is going to mature based on elements we don't control. Yes. The, the warmth of the soil to begin with, the, 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 the rain, the caretaker, and in fact, the loving energy of the caretaker, mm-hmm. uh, the sun, so forth. It's all systemically listening and growing together. So yes, it can be very frustrating. And it, you, it's something I don't hear much anymore, though. And in fact, people will say, when asked why they're going to do something like the Capra course, Sharon Joy invited me. And I know if she invited me, it's going to be interesting and probably worth my while. However, it doesn't always show immediate results. Where we are now is the horses have seen the barn and they are running or wherever is your goal. And what we notice is lots of synchronicities. And to me, that's a clue. Absolutely. Well, there does seem to be this amazing um, rising of consciousness and, and the groundwork, the foundation that has been, you know, been laid and been nurtured and fertilized and, you know, nourished all these years by the work of people like you and Susan and so many in the networks has, I believe, created, um, you know, visible and invisible infrastructure for those people that are just now wanting to hop on board. It's like, that's already built. The foundation has been laid. So thank you so much for all the work that you've been doing. Thank you. Um, I want to, I want to ask a little bit more about networks because you touched on that word and said it's important. So can you help me share a little bit like how I didn't know there were that many different ways to think about networks. What are some of the nuances and the semantics that you think people should? Oh be gosh, um, Capra's been a, a thinker and a share teacher for many years, and he said recently, in his thirty years, he has summarized characteristics of living systems. And again, I want to differentiate a living system and a system. Okay. Good point. Live, living, yes, this is hugely significant because yeah. living systems cannot help themselves. They are naturally pulled into life. Okay. They irresistibly, life pulls life into life. Mm. And Capra said in his 30 years, he has distilled that networks are the core. And what I say is networks, networking with networks. So if life thrives on networks, it seems to me this is a time and a place. I'm in the discovery uh, position myself. What does that mean? And that's part of what I bring to you and the challenge for kins with Susan's many kins groups, kins, kindred, innovations, networks, it, it network spirits. What's Kin stand for today? Kin's Innovation Network. Kin's Innovation Networks. Yep. Yeah. So I challenge and would be curious and maybe partner. What does networks mean for Kin's today? And you've heard me say, I believe the nascent gift is still buried in that word networking, the networks of Kin's. Mm -hmm. When you think of what I said as the bones, the infrastructure of Susan's care, global networks, and you are also reaching out to these various people, right? Yep. What might happen if you convened the various networks and watch what happens when they begin to find each other and recognize kindred spirits? start to self-organize towards what's calling them in a network, a living system. So that to me is a great teaser for what Kins might delve into with the Trojan horse of love, the selection, and then the processes. Yeah, the principles. Yes, absolutely. Well, we are at a place where it's 
that the consciousness has risen high enough, technology has risen to support us in our efforts now to take what was 40 separate silos of individual networks and now opening it up to say, yes. okay, how do these networks connect with one another? And then also each one of those individuals in the networks, right, have their own networks. And so, exactly. um, you know, you mentioned the word imaginal cells, and I, I see this as being a big piece of it as well. It's as if the imaginal mm -hmm. cells um, are now waking up to yet exactly. another level and layer of interconnectivity mm -hmm. yep. and what's, what's possible from there. Yeah. But, you know, it's finding what, what stories that tell the stories you want people to hear that really help. And in Florida, if you imagine looking at the globe from space as NASA did, that shape of our peninsula could look like a chrysalis. And so that story of the chrysalis and imaginal cells is one of our guiding stories. Oh, brilliant. That makes so much sense. Yes. Well, so let's talk about Florida a little bit. Okay. You mentioned in a conversation we had before about a certain number of cities at the you know, most dangerous level. What, what is that number? Um, oh, I, I can't recall, but I know in the uh, science uh, uh, assessments that there are certain cities, as you know, that are in danger of flooding all over the globe with sea level rise. Mm -hmm. And whatever the number is in this country, I think Florida has the most, 25 cities maybe, yeah. being a peninsula. Now, just to make it even more interesting, my county is Pinellas County. It is also a peninsula. Oh, wow. And the city of St. Petersburg is a peninsula. Wow. So while there are many people who don't believe in climate change and sea level rise, Many people don't have to walk very far before they experience it. Right. And particularly during King Tide, comes in October, it seems like, so where the uh, high tides and the moon relate and the neighborhoods are flooded with water and sunny days. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, whatever your belief is, this is what it, you see in Florida. So the fact that we are actually living the experience, if you're in, uh, say, uh, Iowa, those are concepts. Right. But here in Florida with these peninsula, it's much more real. So, yes, we have a dominant number of cities that are going to have to face and make tough choices about where we invest our federal funds right now. Mm hmm. And so the connection partners and the other groups that you work with in Florida, uh, I understand you're bringing together people from multiple different sectors to come together right. and communicate. How is that actually working, you know, physically? What are you doing? How often do you meet? Um, how many different groups are there? What's, what's the, the gist, just to give us an overview? Well, fortunately, we've had these three experiments with Fritjof Capra. And the first one was to bring 40 Florida leaders together through Zoom to take the CAPRA course, which is a 12-week series, and will begin again in the spring. And uh, each week, the course comes out with a new lecture, and they foster more and more study groups. We actually, with the Connection Partners, had two one was with the Florida leaders. And because there wasn't a Western Hemisphere English speaking group, we formed a USA study group. Mm -hmm. So we almost have a control group and, a, and a, another group. And because of the pandemic, we were given the extra boost of talking about it, learning about systems and system collapse at the same time. Mm -hmm. and meeting every week to tell our own experiences. Wow. So that's the Florida 40. And by the way things turn, we found there are many connections with Cleveland. So then the next session was a group of Cleveland leaders. And then we realized, wait a minute, it's much bigger. And so this last group taking the fall course that we just completed a week or so ago is called the Florida Ohio flow. 
So again, that was Florida leaders. And we've continued every Monday night since the course ended in June of 2020. Wow. And we are learning about ourselves as living systems because we've been studying it with Capra. We stay connected. We're part of the alum group. We keep learning from other teachers as well as self as living systems becoming conscious that our group is also a living system and our power in the state of Florida to change policies because we're activists. See, that's why that whole, you need the whole representation. You need people who are either representing a, a district, you know, they're, they're a council member or a county commissioner or connected with them so that they recognize the government, the business, civil society, faith, education. These are all very powerful entities in any community. So that's where the place comes in. Okay putting it in the dirt, in the soil. So you can actually experience the coincidences of seeing each other and having these offline conversations. So we've been doing this by Zoom, as I said, ever since February, 2020, every Monday night. And then the Capra course, the third experiment again was with Ohio and Florida leaders. And uh, we met on a, a a Friday afternoon, and this past Monday, the two groups converged. And how was that? It's been quite fascinating because what rose up out of the first, ourselves as living systems, is back to that word again, profound love. Mm. Wow. And the power of the field of love jumped by the second session because of three or four, maybe there were five of the original Florida 40 were also part of the new group, the Florida Ohio group. So I'm going way off of Ken's, but this is what you're asking me examples. Right. So we noticed this phenomenon of fields jumping on Zoom. Fields jumping. So in other words, an idea or a, or a, a coherent uh, energy that was happening in one group network field of awareness, then leapt and jumped into another? Is that what you mean? We'd already been experiencing it in the Florida group, okay. jumping to other cities, planting itself. It's almost like the soil is fertile. However, another guiding story that we've used, and I think we've used it when Susan was here, is the story of the hundredth monkey. Mm -hmm. but, but it was a story of these monkeys in a small location. In fact, teenage female monkeys washing sweet potatoes. And gosh, they taste so much better. And slowly it, it uh, went throughout the area. But then when it started jumping islands, Yes. And other monkeys were, were washing sweet potatoes. I think that's kind of what we've experienced in Florida. And I, again, taking us too far off course of our Ken's conversation. But these are examples of what we've been talking about of fields actually being intelligent and dynamically filled with love when they're nurtured. And uh, that's why we believe networks of Ken's which I believe carry that same, those same elements of love mm -hmm. can be quite extraordinary. So I think that might be another experiment for Kins and Kins Networks to, uh, to explore. Um, the difference is we also did a project with the city of St. Petersburg to train people in these processes that you mentioned, World Cafe. And our Practicing shows us that the World Cafe process, practiced as we've been doing it, is the fastest way to bring forth a sense of oneness and connected and even collective intelligence. Can you give us a little taste of what is the World Cafe process? Oh my goodness. It's a, it's a chance for people to come together around a common concept as you do in Ken's. Okay. But instead of being a circle, we set up small tables of four and one person stays, the questions could be the same or they could change and people get up and mix. 
Now think about networks, networking with networks. And at the same time, being at the small table of shared listening, because that's a key component, hearts soften, open, and guess what? You've got more heart field going. Mm -hmm. I mentioned how Stephen Post started with the the uh, from the Templeton Foundation to research how uh, un research on unlimited love. Yeah, that's amazing. So that's in Cleveland. Started in Cleveland. What if St. Petersburg in Cleveland started reading Stephen's books and talking about love in our community? Mm -hmm. So yes, love is showing up. That is so heartening. <laughs> it really is. And I think that's that's one of the reasons that I want to do this interview series too. It's to continue to inspire hope by demonstrating so many of the people just in our network that are doing this astonishing, profoundly impactful work and and it's spreading. And so, uh, you know, finding ways for people to be able to plug in where they find resonance. Okay. That's people need to show up in their own community and find what the energy is there and show up and listen to hear where your skills are relevant. And that's not hard to do. You can find out with your government, with your nonprofits, again, faith communities, schools, and find what pulls your heart and come and offer your skills. I think that's one of the biggest questions, Lauren. I think you've told me your friends have asked you the same thing. What do I do? Where do I start? Yes. So my recommendation is go listen to your own community and notice where your heart starts to open and where you want to share your skills and your gifts. And one of the early things that you had mentioned in our conversations was the importance of place, mm -hmm. really attaching the principles to place. So that brings that up. Um, I, I do want to add one more thing, though, before I lose the train of thought, and that is um, what you just said speaks to Susan's principle of we each do what we love to do and do well at no charge. Uh, basically gener generously. So we, we give our time and talent um, and little else. We don't, we don't do anything else. And, and that is the example of living in alignment with your life purpose, your life destiny path, finding what that is for you. And, and you summed it up by just saying, listen and find yeah. what you're called to serve. So I just want to give and, voice to that. And I will clap and accelerate what you said, because too often we have an idea or we have a pet project or we have an agenda. I'm among them. It's less likely to be successful. So one of the things I try to live is think less, listen more and choose wisely. There's a time to think, but if you are thinking, you have an answer. My guess is, that answer will be better served in your community if you listen to what already exists. Mm, that's that's so relevant. I think right now too, um, it's the it's the masculine feminine uh, mm -hmm. so often, and it's not men versus women, but it's this notion of the masculine being more the linear, rational headspace mm -hmm. part. When you mentioned thinking, uh, mm -hmm. wanting to go in and fix and go in and do as opposed to the feminine, which is more about stepping back, recognizing the wholeness. There's a sense of surrender, I think, then my, my interpretation there, uh, surrender to what is arising and listen and then, and then serve in a way that, that is in alignment for you. So am I catching that? Yes. Okay. And this idea, and some of us have had this experience by, whatever it is, listening without realizing it, because we thought we were fixing things. Oh, yes. And sometimes we've been very successful. My guess is it's because without thinking about it, realizing it, we're in tune with where the, the flow is already going. Fixing doesn't show up that I've seen in nature. I it doesn't that. do that. 
Right. So, so what we like to consider is practicing biomimicry. Okay. Yep. How do we be nature? The bumper sticker is what would nature do? Mm. Mm -hmm. What does nature do? Nature doesn't fix. I've never seen nature fix. I've seen things die and then they become the, the new soil for something that grows later. Yes. But fixing is it is, excuse me, don't like to use the word but either. Fixing is also an illusion because in living systems, there is no such thing. It just, you can't fix one thing because it pulls in everything else. So that's why I go back to teaching ourselves, learning about living systems is a key. Mm -hmm. So practice biomimicry, recognizing we are actually nature. We don't have to go out into it. That is We're a, a, vital point. Li a living example of consciousness and the universe becoming more aware of ourselves, itself, the universe. So we are the universe. We are nature. And tragically, in the last several hundred years, we've been following other stories and they've led us to here. What do you mean by that? Following other stories? Uh, stories that, uh, that, that uh, we are like machines. Oh. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Our yes. bodies are like machines. That we're, that's and that's as mechanical. you pointed out, as you pointed out, that there is linear and that is the one to follow rather than the the Tao, the picture of two di different, distinctly different colors with the other embedded in the other, I think is much more directional for us to consider right now. The other thing that you mentioned in reading about the connection partners was not so prevalent as it is today because you can hardly go anywhere, Lauren, without hearing, we need to learn to sit and talk together, listen to one another again. Mm -hmm. So we mentioned these different models of conversation and that's why it's important to know which one works for the issue you're looking at. So World Cafe, I mentioned, to, is what we find is the fastest way for people to get a sense of listening and the extraordinary wisdom that's in a room and to feel that sense of collective thinking. You can, you can actually feel that in two and a half hours. It isn't what we choose when we're trying to go into an action step, like deal with affordable housing. But it is definitely a beginning, like a, like you before you're going to make a, something with a lemon, you might roll it around so that it gets juicy first. Yeah. The World Cafe loosens us up to the, to the guidelines and the value of what we receive by listening. Because we already know what we know. The trick is, what do we not know? Yeah. And that's what we hear from all these other people. So beginning with the juicing of, of listening, the World Cafe is a great asset. We like the open space technology for one that helps people self-organize like imaginal cells around the topics that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. So again, each one is different. They do different things. In Ken's model, it's a circle collective listening. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I think, you know, with, with kids, we are evolving to next level of not just having it be one thing, but allowing the, the resonance of the field, right. Of so mm -hmm. many people's hearts who are Absolutely. all committed to uh, nurturing mother earth, elevating consciousness, bringing us to a next level of harmony. Um, so the potential there, I think, mm -hmm. is exactly. so wide open. And that brings up another topic. Maybe I'm going too far off center, but that's something I do, is the cultural creatives. Yes. Paul Ray did that research back in 1994, funded by the Institute of Noetic Sciences and, uh, and the Fetzer Institute. And with millions and millions of people defined as we probably are identifying ourselves to be who care about each other and the future of all of us, all of life and the planet. Um, he, he says there are millions and millions of us. And he's gone on to research Europe and Japan and maybe other areas. 
the, the Achilles heel is we don't know each other. We don't know who each other are. Yes. So we could be living next door in the same building. So to me, that's what Ken's offers. You know who each other are. You have their names and maybe their phone numbers and emails. Mm -hmm. So what we found is another practical step is convening the cultural creatives who identify themselves as Susan does and Ken's does as recognizing the spirit as part of the process. Mm -hmm. And that's what Ray calls the core cultural creatives people who recognize spirit and the impact of each of our own hearts on the collective heart, mm. the purity of each of us reaching out into the cosmos. So I think that's why I so treasure what Susan and all the leaders who've recognized and heard her call and responded, mm -hmm. including you mm -hmm. and your board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, um, it's such an honor to be in this position. I, I feel like I'm pinching myself on a, on a regular basis because of the, um, just the, the established relationships that Susan has um, built and, and they, they've just held firm for so many years. You know, she disappeared for 15 years um, in Ecuador, reached back out and the love and the appreciation that has come forth um, and the, um, just the level of depth, I think, that many of these people have with one another. These are, this is not just like a group that meets and, you know, tries to, to make something happen. There is so much more um, heart, so yes. much more See? connection and dedication. And that is what I've witnessed. And, um, mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, now, now how do we take this to the next level and allow what's evolving with technology, with communications, with um, various ways that we can share knowledge and share connections that weren't available 15 years ago. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. speaking of those connections, I was fortunate enough to see Susan be recognized by the Future Capital Group. Yes. Yes. Lawrence Ford presented her with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Well-deserved. That was wonderful. So back to Stephen. Stephen is also part of that leadership with Susan. Mm -hmm. Stephen Post, the guy from Cleveland. Okay. So that's what's starting to be, um, I think, really fun is where we imaginal cells are finding each other. Yes. And, and back to Susan's background, as well as the future of uh, the future capital, I believe it is finance and business that will lead us forward. People I believe you're right, because government is not capable. Um, we are too choked up at the moment. I mean, government is necessary and relevant. Absolutely. It is very important to get good leaders in there and um to make solutions that are more economically viable than the existing solutions is what we need to, to kick this up a notch, I think, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I believe the uh, Kins, again, the, the, the bones of Kins is a real model for others who are ne who've never heard of it mm -hmm. to yeah. look at and see what they find. Because to me, the ingredients are there. And you had mentioned something um, in, in a conversation that you and I had a long time ago, um, that there are conveners, there are facilitators, there's different kind of roles within a group that are necessary. Um, so it's not, it's not necessarily everyone's dharma to start a kin's group. Yeah. Um, but what would you say about that, about people finding their role in their place, or if they're feeling called to, to want to contribute? Well, you already said it, start, start where you are. But. Yes. And actually that goes back to the connection partners. Um, we are a collaborative of individuals with varieties of skills. So I hear too many webinars where individuals are encouraged to go off and do something. And yet it feels, it hurts me because that may not be their gift. Mm -hmm. And maybe their gift is again, going and listening to where they feel the heartbeat, the resonance, and they want to be of service. Um, 
wanting some person or some organization to be the leader is very treacherous. And we're experiencing it as if we hadn't known it before, thinking somebody was going to take care of us. Well, somebody has, and somebody will. Is that where we want to be? Or do we prefer, like I know uh, Susan talks about, and I believe I heard Stuart Valentine mention, Indrasnet, all gems in Indrasnet. So if you feel called, it would seem to me, one of the first things might do to think of, oh my goodness, who else is passionate about this too? Rather than a single person, because in Indra's net, all the gems are gorgeous and beautiful and gifts. So part of what's been going on with the Florida 40, with the connection partners and many things that we do is listening for what is a collective governance. So back to Ken's, how does Ken's govern itself? If these networks were to become viable, to me, that's one of the cutting questions of how this all comes together. Um, and, and actually, I do want to share something that started earlier, and I want to be really true and rich with what what uh, Fritschhoff has discovered, because I found it. He's found these four characteristics of living systems. Remember I talked about that? Mm -hmm. Life organizes itself in networks, networks within networks. Number two, life is inherently creative, perpetually emerging. Life is inherently intelligent, learning, responding, feedback loops. Life is inherently regenerating if evolution, those spontaneous bursts of bifurcation, autopoiesis. So those are the four characteristics, but they all hang on life organizes itself in networks within networks. Mm. Now, Lauren, you didn't ask for this, but again, the coincidence is I'm reading an old article from Meg Wheatley that she spoke to the IONS conference about in 1995. And it's called The Unplanned Organization, Learning from Nature, Emergent Creativity. And when you start counting things, she's counted seven characteristics that have guided her. And it's all fitting in with these living systems. She says, we live in a world in which Life wants to happen. Organizations are living systems, or at least the people in them are living systems. We, are, we live in a universe that is alive, creative, and experimenting all the time to discover what's possible. It's the natural tendency of life to organize, to see greater levels of complexity and diversity. Life uses messes to get to well-ordered solutions. Life is intent on finding what works, not what's right. Life creates more possibilities as it engages with opportunities. And life organizes around identity. Now, aren't those just delicious to add to what I just told you from Fritjof Capra? From his... 30 years of study, four characteristics of living systems. And here Meg, back in 1995, even refers to Fritschhoff in this article, mentioning these seven qualities of life. So there is that biomimicry showing up. What a sad thing that we've forgotten that we're, that we're nature. Mm -hmm. And that's why creating these spaces as Susan has, in locations that have nature around or you're in the midst of nature. So she has these qualities innately. And that's where maybe my picking up what I think are specific material, the bones, may be helpful as people explore what's next for Ken's. Because you know, that's part of life is we mature mm -hmm. and we change and we even change our minds. Yes. Hopefully we don't change our hearts. 
Right. Right. I love it. That is, that is so perfect and a, a fabulous place to, to pause, I think, on our conversation. Um, I just want to thank you so much for your wisdom, your oh, insight, you. helping us distill down some of the, you know, what was it about the principles of kins, the bones, as you put it, the structure um, that you took and used and then continue to evolve and spread because it's not just one thing. And so that's an example too. anybody who is interested in wanting to be part of a kin's network, maybe starting a kin's network. There's no, there's no, you know, specific, you must do it a certain way. The way that Susan has developed looks more simple than I think it really is. I think there's so much richness. She was able to distill down all of those uh, steps and the operating principles. But if you take each one of them, <laughs> there's volumes of information encoded in those little principles. So yeah, to the best of your ability, take that. But, but it doesn't stop you from finding something in your specific community uh, to connect, remembering that we are part of nature and that there are other people whose um, wisdom, insight, voices you might not have known, but just fits right into what you want to do so that you can express your own, you know, divine nature calling, whatever it is. So that would be fun. You know, how can it be fun? That is what nature does. Nature plays, looking mm -hmm. for possibilities, relentlessly looking for what's pulling them into more life. Let's not impede ourselves. And so my recommendation is find a group of friends that represent diversity in as many ways as you can, because you'll know, as you know in your life, Lauren, you need skills too. Mm -hmm. uh, it can float up in the sky or it can stand on the earth and you need both mm -hmm. to start the walking because you don't know where you're going. So. My suggestion is get a group of four or five people and play around. In fact, what about doing an experimental group? Yeah. Well, we do that. have the Kins step-by-step -step guidebook available for anyone uh, on our website. And then Susan's amazing book, The Trojan Horse of Love, which yes. has all the principles, um, is available for free at kinshipearth.org. Definitely want to refer you there. Um, is there anything, so where, where can people find you and what would be your call to action uh, from the Connection Partners? Great question. Thank you, Lauren. We are theconnectionpartners.com. So that's the website. And what we're called to do is demonstrate how love can transform communities. So that's what we're about. And we have a common agreement among us of the power of ourselves, our hearts, that we are consciousness. We are the universe becoming conscious of ourselves. And of course, we're all patterned into a whole other stories. So we have to remind each other when we fall off course. So what would people, action they can take? I would say, pick up the Ken's handbook and play around with how you might play around with how you might explore how this works. And as I read in Meg Wheatley, it's not about what's right. It's what shows up to work in your life, with your friends, and in your community. And your community could be your family, or it could be a small group of a sewing circle. It could be the state of Florida or some other place. It could be whatever you choose because we're all living systems. Yes. And we are manifesting this, whether we know it or not. And that's one of the gifts that Susan brings. She didn't know what she was doing necessarily. So when you try to dissect it and read it as if it's a recipe, it's really difficult because she just makes it so simple, but there are nuances. And my guess is what I've discovered, there's lots of science that you can turn to that explain and tell you why this works. But then once you tinker and play with it, then you have too much fun and you don't want to stop doing. <laughs> That's the beauty of it, right? Yeah. Yes. 
Yes. And so much hope, so much hope and love. Um, the, the fact that you're actually using the word love out loud in the work that you're doing, working with municipalities, working with energy, working with um, leadership in Florida, overtly saying we are trying to measure the impact of love on a community. Bravo. And thank you for setting that amazing. Well, example. you know, there are others doing it. We're not the only ones. Uh, one of our companions here in St. Petersburg years ago, 10 years ago, wrote a book for the love of cities. Mm. And he wrote about St. Petersburg. And he also wrote about Cleveland and Detroit and other books, other cities. So uh, love is all over the place. It's been a little shy, perhaps. Yeah. But that's why the Trojan horse of love is such a beautiful gift. Yes. Because it's real live stuff in there. And, and amazing stories. Yes. And human from her human perspective, that it's not like she claimed to have it all figured out. Uh, she was following her heart, listening to her intuition, making sometimes difficult choices to continue uh, that, that clarity of mission. And I think we started the conversation with that. I think you've mentioned that uh, the clearer you are with your mission and vision, and it, um, and it can really be about love. It doesn't have to be a specific. Yeah. So each person can define love as they agree and then others that they agree uh this is more than valentine's day yes but there's a lot of research on love besides what john templeton sir john templeton started in cleveland mm -hmm. it's it's really all over the place if you uncover it mm -hmm. yes yep love it all right fun, fun. Well, thank you so much lauren Thank you, Sharon Joy. It's been a pleasure, and um, I, we'll we'll be in touch. I could I could talk to you all day. Uh, I have to stop myself because I just I, it's so refreshing <laughs> to hear uh, oh, your good. your words and your clarity and and the way you perceive things. So thank you. Well, I as you hear have many many inspirations, mm -hmm. and they come from individuals and the rest of life and some of whom I've mentioned in this. So it isn't a person or an organization. It's it's all of us collectively that are so incredibly gifted. As Lynn Twist said, together we're a genius. Absolutely. And this is about bringing all of our genius together. So thank you for holding space for that to happen. Thanks for inviting me, Lauren. All right. We'll see you next time, Sharon Joy. Bye -bye. Love to Susan. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Kinship Earth Connections. We invite you to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. To learn more about Sharon Joy Kleitch and The Connection Partners, visit theconnectionpartners.com. To get your free copy of The Trojan Horse of Love by Susan Davis Mora and The Kins Network Playbook, and to receive invitations for our upcoming events, please visit us at kinshipearth.org. Thank you.